So common classic bass patches are really useful to know because the concepts behind how they make them will give you a good understanding of how to make bass tones in general so we don't get stuck in that section of the music production process. So I'm gonna show you seven types, let's get into it. So the first one is probably the most useful, something that I use all the time, and just making a really solid bass tone with operator here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is head over to this panel over here. These, these panels, when you click them, the uh, middle box changes, and just select this one, which is gonna make each of these operators output uh, separately. And I'm gonna go over here and select a saw wave, and then go over to the second one, and select a square wave. And I'm gonna bring both of the levels up 100% all the way, and then go over to the envelope on this one and just make sure that it's all the way up. I'm just gonna adjust this release a little bit as well. And same with this one, maybe just adjust this release a little bit. And this is pretty much it. So far, it's not gonna sound amazing yet, uh, but where we've got the foundations of a really nice bass patch because we have some really nice top end harmonics as well as a really solid low end. So now all we need to do is go to this filter. I'm just gonna bring it down and then go to this envelope and bring this envelope up and that's just gonna assign this envelope shape that we have here to this filter. Let's have a listen of this. So you can adjust this envelope. And that's pretty much it. That is the bass tone. I use this all the time and it's really, really useful. It's just a really solid bass tone that has a nice low end and a nice bit of filter, crispy upper harmonics as well. So let's have a listen. So have a go at making this one. It's a really good one to know, especially if you're just getting started in music production. It's very versatile and you can use it in lots of different genres as well. If you are just sort of learning the ropes at the moment, I would recommend checking out our EDM starter kit as well. This is just a, a nicely curated pack with some nice samples and presets. So next we're gonna talk about the sub bass. Uh, all the sub bass is, is like a sound that you've started with that has lots of harmonics and we're shaving away heaps of those harmonics so we just have that sort of real low end or a sound that doesn't have much harmonics like a sine wave and then we're adding harmonics to it. So we can turn something like this into a sub bass and all that would require is for me to just pull down this filter a little bit more and then I'm just gonna reduce the amount of envelope that's on here as well. And so this is pretty subby at the moment, but what I'm gonna do is actually go over to this filter mode and just choose one of these filter modes, so maybe this one, and then I'm just gonna use this filter drive and just drive this filter, and that's gonna give us a little bit more fatness, a little bit more upper harmonics as well. I'm also gonna choose this 12 decibel per octave filter, which is a little bit softer, and it's gonna let a little bit more harmonics through as well. And I'm also gonna turn this shaper on, maybe something soft. Let's have a look at this. Maybe I can turn that off. And what I'm gonna do now is actually go get some erosion. And I'm just gonna use this to add some noise to the sample. So this is gonna help with that translation of that low end frequencies as well. So maybe something like this. And then maybe, uh, duplicate it and add another one. This is a nice trick that I like to do. Duplicate and add two different erosion devices. So now we have a really thick sub, which we used that original operator patch to make with. So I was also talking about how we can use a sine wave to create uh, some nice subs as well. And this is the opposite approach because we're adding harmonics to something that has no harmonics. So uh, I'm gonna start off going into this oscillator section, and I'm just gonna hit this number 16 here. And now we can just draw in harmonics in here. So I'm just gonna draw in a few little bars here. Let's put this up an octave so you can hear it a little bit easier. So you can see that. Put it back down, maybe even something like this. And you can hear that's just ever so slightly changing the sound. And then we're gonna be using, again, some filter drive, something like this, and just drive the filter. You 
You can even use some Shaper again as well. And again, that same erosion trick, I'm just gonna add some noise to my bass patch over here. Let's have a listen now. So we're just using different techniques to add some harmonics to a sine wave. So now let's make a respace. I've just pulled up Serum, this is an, in an initial preset. And I'm just going to go over to this saw wave over here and just pull the unison up and you'll see that's pretty much a respace. Like that is the general gist of how we make respaces. We just duplicate the oscillator in some way or another and we detune the voices. So the old school way is just to create a few different oscillators and then detune them slightly from each other. But this way, this is actually happening for us. So I've just created a whole bunch of voices as you can see and we're just detuning them slightly and that's creating this sort of phasing respace effect. So what I'm also gonna do is go over here and just grab a sine wave as well. And this is gonna be like the low end foundation of our re-space. So now we have a little bit more weight in the low end. And then I'm gonna grab my filter as well. So from here on, it's just a matter of creating some movement. So we create the movement with our LFO. So if I was to map this LFO to something, you'll see that it's gonna start moving around. So just the detune amount, let's have a listen to this. Creating some movement, right? But my favorite technique with respaces is going over to this note function and mapping the note to the rate of our LFO. I'm just gonna turn the BPM sync off as well and you'll see that when I do this, as I play higher notes, the rate of this LFO is gonna get quicker. So if I go up an octave, really quick, and if I go down, slower, right? So this is simulating that natural phasing effect that we get when we detune oscillators. So now I'm gonna change this curve as well, just to emphasize this effect a little bit more. Let's just increase the drive over here, maybe a bit of resonance and bring this filter down. And I'm actually gonna map the note to the cutoff as well. So as I play higher notes, the cutoff is going to open up a bit. You can see that filter moving around. So now we simply map this LFO to some things that we want to add a bit of movement to. So we can map it to this wavetable position. I can map it to the actual cutoff itself. I'm just gonna have a really small amount here. That's a really nice way to create some movement. And from here on, you can just sort of experiment with mapping it to things and just have a little bit of fun, see what happens. So the next one we're gonna make is an 808. Really simple to make. I'm just gonna grab a sine wave again, and I'm gonna use an envelope one, uh, my amp envelope to just uh, create how long we want our 808 to be. So let's have a listen. I think that's kind of a nice length. I'm just going to increase the release as well. Right. And then I'm going to use envelope two and reduce this and make a really plucky envelope. And we're going to use this to map it to the coarse pitch. So I'm also just gonna go over to the matrix and hit this type arrow and change it to a, a unidirectional modulation. So it just goes up and then falls back down to the pitch of our note that we're playing. And the, and the pitch modulation is creating that punch, right? So I'm gonna go down in note. Let's just turn this up a little bit so you can hear it. And then from this point on, all we do is just add some distortion and that's about it. Add some distortion over here. So maybe I'm going to go. That's a nice fat 808 sound. You can even try out some of these, like the, the diode one is going to create a crazy uh, distorted 808. That's a really nice sound. Just a little bonus tip. You can also experiment around with modulating or changing this waveform in here as well. So I can go into the warp modes and try something like uh, like bend, and then you can, you 
get different tones with how you change this waveform. So the next one is the techno rumble or like a reverb bass. So I've got a kick drum here. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of distortion to that as well, actually. So we've got a nice distorted techno kick drum. And what you can do is you can just sort of duplicate this and then apply reverb to this track, this kick drum track that you've made, or uh, there's actually no limits to this. So you can you can use any sample that you want to create this uh, techno uh, bass line, this reverb bass. So uh, just as a point of example, I'm gonna show you uh, making this with a different sample. I've just chosen this sample here because it has a nice amount of texture in there. And uh, I'm gonna go grab my reverb device. So let's grab a reverb. And I'm gonna put this 100% wet and just bring up the decay time a little bit. And this is the start of what we're gonna be working with. You're also gonna need a few other things. Uh, you're gonna need a filter uh, to filter out those high ends. So let's filter that out. We just want that low end, right? You're also gonna need some sort of volume shaping device. So I'm gonna use LFO tool here. So let's shape the sound like this. I'm just gonna get, get rid of those clicks in there. I also like to add a bit more distortion onto, onto it as well. Add a little bit more interesting upper harmonics as well. So that actually sounds pretty good. And you can sort of play around with the different modes in here. So let's have a listen to this. That's really aggressive. I really like that one. And this is a nice plugin because it's actually monoing our output as well. Uh, so it's making sure that we don't have that width, that stereo information. We're just getting center mono information for our low, low frequencies. And from this point on, I would highly, highly recommend experimenting with some other things that sort of complement the rhythm as well because we don't really have much of a rhythm here we just have that sort of low frequency information so to make really interesting techno rumbles we need that extra rhythmic component as well so next up we're going to look at that retro sort of synth wave 80s synth bass sound i'm just going to make this in wavetable with a few saw waves so this is what it sounds like so far just a regular saw wave right and uh, I'm gonna put this up an octave as well and just bring the filter back. So now we need a bit of filter movement. So I'm gonna grab this envelope too, bring it down and go to the matrix and just click on this filter here and then just assign envelope two to this filter. And now we just need to add a sub oscillator. So you can use the sub oscillator over here but what I'm gonna do in this case is grab my second oscillator, put it onto a saw wave as well, and then just keep that on zero. And so this is going to be an octave higher than that one and have a listen to this. So now I'm just gonna detune these oscillators slightly from each other, so around about five cents or so. I'm also gonna put this into mono mode over here and go over to the unison and just put some unison on there. So let's have a listen now. And that is the sound, super, super simple. It's just a few saw waves and a bit of filter movement and a bit of unison, a bit of detune as well. The last one today is the donk bass. Uh, I really wanted to go over this one uh, just to emphasize the concept of frequency modulation. Frequency modulation is very useful and it's a nice thing to have in your arsenal. So I'll show you how easy it is to set up. Uh, what I'm going to do is just start off with a uh, sine wave again and I'm going to put a little bit of unison on this one this time as well. So right now we just have a, a sine wave. I'm going to pull down the randomness and the phase because I just want this to sound the exact same every time. And what I'm actually going to do in this position here is I'm going to go over to the menu and copy oscillator A to B. And so we've just got an exact replica of this. And I'm actually going to reduce the level of this one to zero because we're going to be using this one just to modulate this one over here. So how we do that in Serum is we go over here to this warp mode and select FM from B. And then we turn this up. And as you turn this up, you'll hear the FM sound. So this one is modulating this one to change the waveform 
of what it actually looks like. So what I'm actually going to do now is put this modulator, this, this thing that's modulating this other one over here, up an octave and that's going to change the tone of the FM. So let's go down, have a look. At, up. So it makes it a little bit more glassy or metallic the more octaves that you go up, right? So from here, I'm going to go over to this envelope one, the amp envelope, and just pull this down to make it a plucky sound, right? And I'm actually going to start modulating things with this envelope as well. So I'm going to modulate the FM amount. Let's have a listen to this. And I'm actually going to modulate some of the, the detune amounts. Maybe we could do something like this. And I'm going to modulate this detune amount over here as well, just for a bit of fun. I'm going to go over to the filter and let's modulate this as well. And for this one, I'm going to go over to the matrix and turn this type to uh, the unidirectional arrow as well. So I can just go like this with the filter and just choose where I want it to modulate from. We can add some effects over here. Maybe Maybe a bit of distortion, maybe even some compression to just emphasize that hit a little bit more. Uh, but this is pretty much it. I just wanted to introduce this one to you because it has some nice FM stuff going on and it's kind of easy to do as well. So it's a good one just to know and have in your arsenal so you can use this concept in whatever bass batch you want. So that's it for today. Hope you've learned a few things about bass design. It's surprising how simple all of these classic uh, common bass tones are. Bass tones are usually pretty simple. That's what you'll come to realize. And it's great because all of these techniques are applicable among all genres, sort of all bass design as well. Let me know which one of these patches is your favorite. I think my one is probably the first operator bass. It's just so simple and useful. If you've enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.